Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today I'm going to talk to you about the brachial plexus, but in particular, the terminal branches. Uh, in an earlier video, I talk about the brachial plexus and the complexity around it, and I will do a little recap, but the focus on this uh, PowerPoint will be to discuss the branches and the innovation to the muscles and the sensory component. So have a look at uh, the picture here. And in this case, you've got the nerve roots and you've got five nerve roots here. And you can see between C5 and T1 is part of the brachial plexus. And as it comes out, it's got five roots along here. And then the five roots become the three trunks. And we've got the superior, middle and inferior trunk. And then the trunks become divisions and they split to three anterior and three posterior. So you'll have an anterior and posterior of each along here. And then they become the lateral and the posterior and medial cord, and then eventually becomes the terminal branches. And the easiest way to look at the terminal branches, there's a mnemonic I use. Let me just go up that. And you can see, but it's called MA-MU. And then that relates to the muscular cutaneous nerve, the auxiliary, the radial, the median, and the ulna. So quite a nice, simple mnemonic to try to remember the five terminal branches. So what we can do now is look a little bit closer at the muscular cutaneous nerve. And if you look here, you can see the nerve to the left, the muscular cutaneous underlined, and then this nerve coming off. And you can see it's a continuation of a lateral cord, which comes from the anterior division along here, okay, which comes from the superior trunk from roughly C5 and C6 area and a little branch of C7. Now, let's have a look at uh, the muscles it supplies. There's actually a spelling mistake in here, so I apologize for that. I wonder if anybody can spot that. So the three muscles it supplies is the coracobrachialis, that's the spelling mistake. Uh, I've only just noticed that. The biceps brachii, which has been cut here, along here, and the brachialis. So these are the muscles that the muscular cutaneous nerve will supply. And the sensory, which is not on there, will be uh, the lateral forearm yeah, along the sort of area. So that'll be the sensory part. So that's the M. Let's have a look at the auxiliary nerve. Auxiliary nerve, it's like a little slip of a nerve that comes off. You can see that comes off the posterior cord along here. Comes roughly from C5 and C6 along there. And you can see in this case, we have got the sensory. This is called the regimental badge area. I'll show you that in a second along here. So this is the area of the arm, almost like where this badge would be around here. And then the muscle or muscles it supplies will be the deltoid. And you can just see the teres minor in the background there. So it supplies these two muscles. Let's take a closer look at the auxiliary nerve. Oop. There we go. So we're jumping ahead. And you can see the auxiliary nerve. So this is the surgical neck along here. And then the nerve comes behind and supplies these muscles. And typically, a dislocation of a shoulder can actually damage the auxiliary nerve. This is where you tend to lose the sensation around it. So this is the regimental badge area. So if you have something sharp in this area and you've damaged the nerve, dislocation, as I've mentioned, then you might find you lose the sensation to that part. Now, so that's for... M, and that's the A, the auxiliary. So let's look at the R, which is the, the radial nerve, a bit more complex now. So the radial nerve, you can see that it comes from C5 and C6 and C7 and C8 and T1. Okay, so it's a big wire, if you like, because they are almost like wires coming off like a car battery, as I, as I try to think of them. As a, even though it's not an electrical circuit, it is sort of within our body. Now, the radial nerve, if you're looking at this area in particular, almost like in the web space on the dorsal surface is the main innovation of a radial nerve, even though there are other areas along here. So this would be the, the sensory component. But I always believe that if you've got a damage pathology to the radial nerve, then the patient tends to have loss of sensation to this area in here. The motor supply is pretty complex. Uh, you can see that the majority of the muscles of the extensors Okay, extensors of the elbow and extensors of the wrist and even extensor of the thumb, okay, the extensor pollicis brevis yeah, and longus um, will be here. Let's go back to here. 
these ones. So there are many muscles that this nerve supplies. So this will be the radial nerve. And you can see in this case, a friend of mine many years ago was actually shot and the bullet went through and damaged the nerve and you end up with a, a wrist drop. So if you damage the nerve, you could still extend the elbow, but the damage was to the nerve here. So the supply to the extensors was reduced. So the wrist was held in a drop position. To test it, one way is to test. This is the extensor pollicis longus. So you can ask the patient to resist pushing up to see if they are strong. And that could be a simple radial nerve test, or you can do wrist extension. Moving on, the median nerve. I think most people understand a little bit about the median nerve because there's a condition called carpal tunnel or carpal tunnel syndrome, where the nerve penetrates through and then it can give you altered sensation to the hand, as we'll discuss. The median nerve, again, pretty big wire. Yeah, there's a branch coming off a lateral, sorry, lateral cord here, and the medial cord to form it. So this is the motor supply. So the majority of the flexors is supplied by the median nerve along here. So the flexor digitorum profundus is actually supplied by the radial side because the ulnar supply, uh, the ulnar nerve is supplied to that, um, the ulnar part of the flexor digitorum profundus. Sounds quite complex, but it's not really when you think about it. So most of the flexors are innervated by that. Ulnaris is, flex is from the ulnar nerve, okay? So a flexor carpi ulnaris is from the ulnar nerve, but the majority of them will be by the median nerve. In the hand, it's mainly by what we call the loaf muscles of the phenar eminence. So this is the phenar eminence and the L, the O, the A, the F. So the L is the lateral two lumbricals, the second and the third. And then the O is opponens pollicis brevis, which I think, is it on there? I'm not sure if I can see that one. Um, no, yeah, but the opponens will be on there. So will the flexor pollicis, and so will the abductor pollicis brevis as well. So these are the motor supply. The sensory supply will be to the thumb, index, middle and half a ring finger along here. You can see that. And also the dorsal hand, you can see just on top, the top digits and a little bit of the, the, the ring finger here and a bit on the pollux. This might be a better picture, you can see. So sensory innovation to the hand yeah, along this area in here. So you can see it's mainly the two thirds of the hand that will be supplied. This is part of the radial nerve. Yeah, then this is the ulnar nerve, which we're going to come on to shortly along here. This is the carpal tunnel. So the nerve comes through. There's actually 10 structures that go through the carpal tunnel. You've got the flexor tendons, okay? So you've got eight tendons, flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus. You've actually got the uh, adductor pollicis, yeah, that will go through there longest. And in fact, it's actually flexor pollicis that goes through there, I apologize. And you've also got the median nerve that will go through that area. Um, so if you've got any compression within, then you're going to get altered sensation along this area in here. Let's move on. This is the loaf muscles I mentioned earlier, okay, and you can see that they're all in here. So the L, okay, so the L, the O, the A, the F will be those muscles in that area. So that is part of the, the phenar eminence. And how we test it? My there we go. So you can do a simple pinch grip. So you can pinch and then resist that one. And that could be a easy test for the motor nerve supply of the median nerve. The last one will be the ulnar nerve. And again, you can see the wire that comes off from C8 and T1. Just follow it back. These two become the ulnar nerve along here. These are the muscles. So I did mention earlier. So this will be the ulnar side of the flexor digitorum profundus, the flexor carpi ulnaris, and naturally it supplies the hypophena eminent in the hand. Yeah, for instance, they will be the relation to the little finger, that's called digiti minimi. So if you bring the little finger over to meet the thumb, so you are opposing, so that would be opponens digiti minimi. We can abduct, and that would be digiti minimi as well, and we can also flex. So the ulnar nerve will supply them, also will supply part of the Lumbricals, the third and the fourth, yeah, and also the palmaris brevis uh, within the hand. 
The sensory supply will be the ulnar side, in particular to the tip of a little finger. There's actually a little canal that goes through there called the Guillon's Canal. And you can see it here, it comes down, there's a little canal around here, okay? So it's between the pisiform, not the best picture of this one, between the pisiform and the hamate. This one's slightly better. Yeah, along here, so Guillaume's canal, yeah, it comes through there. And then this is the ulnar nerve, you can see the sensory area that it supplies along that part. And then the test it, we can do the motor test. So if we test abduction of the little finger, we are testing the abductor digiti minimi. And then that would be a test for the ulnar nerve supply. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Um, so we covered MAMU, which is the five terminal branches. If you have any comments, then please just leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you enjoyed the talk and please subscribe to my channel and you can watch further videos.